Hello everyone. Good morning. I hope you are join enjoying this happy Friday. And as I look outside, it is beautiful weather here in Seattle. Uh, what are you guys seeing where you guys are? Um, we are gearing up for only a couple more weeks left of school, but I know that there are so many across the country that are already on school holidays and I bet you're loving it. I can't wait. Not long for us now. Now, I'm here for our weekly burning questions. So uh, we have a question here. We have been gluten-free for a few weeks now and my child's behavior has gotten worse. What am I doing wrong? And this really great question was brought to us by the lovely Amanda and it's such a common question that I wanted to share the answer with everyone right here. So there are a few things in mind that you have to keep in mind. First of all, it could be detox. There are many symptoms and side effects of gluten detox and gluten withdrawal and detoxing looks different for everyone. So I'm just going to list out a few symptoms and side effects you might experience as you are coming off gluten and experiencing gluten detox and gluten withdrawal. So feeling tired and sluggish and lethargic, uh, trouble concentrating or staying focused, headaches, unusual tingling sensations, joint pain. Um, you can be more susceptible to catching colds or viruses. You can have trouble sleeping. You can get bad breath or unpleasant body odor. You can have stomach issues like gas or bloating or indigestion allergies or food sensitivities, skin problems, especially acne and eczema. Kids that are predisposed to eczema when they come off gluten, usually the eczema will flare up for a bit before it gets better. You can get constipation, diarrhea, other you know, stomach problems. You can feel depressed, anxiety, anxious, irritability, crankiness, back pain, mood changes, hemorrhoids even, and sinus conjection. So as you can see, the appearance of these things getting worse might actually just be your child going through detox. Now, um, there are some things you can do to help. I love um, detox baths. So I love using magnesium salts and you can do one to two cups of magnesium salts in the bath and soak in there for 20 minutes at a time. I like to do them two to three times a week. My kids do them religiously two to three times a week. You can also put some baking soda in there as well. You can also get something like activated charcoal to help mop up any toxins that are going through the body. Having said that, if the symptoms continue for an extended period of time, it would be wise to consult your doctor. Now, number two, another thing I thought of is the possibility of your child sneaking gluten from somewhere. Could they be getting it from a friend's house or from school or from a family member's house? If it's in your home, could they be sneaking it sometimes? Um, or could it be hiding in a product that you're not aware of? I am constantly amazed by some of the products that contain gluten. So make sure and check your labels very, very carefully. And finally, another thing to consider is lab testing. Now for the families I work with who are already gluten, dairy, and soy free and are still having struggles, we often find that functional lab testing enables us to really get to the bottom of what is going on in their body. That being said, a few weeks into gluten-free and not seeing the issues is not something you want to dive into functional lab testing. It's usually, you know, if a family's been doing it for six months and they've seen some good changes, but they do know that something deeper is going on. Now, a lot of our kids have what's called leaky gut. I actually did a video not too long ago explaining leaky gut in detail. So I am going to pop that link into the comments after the training is over. But basically leaky gut is the breakdown of the lining of the gut and it forms these large holes in the lining. Now, when we eat food, even the healthiest food, before the gut has had a chance to break it down, it can go through the holes in the gut into our bloodstream. Now, the way the body's designed is that when something foreign goes into our bloodstream, it recognizes it as a foreign object and it turns on this immune response. Now, if you think about this, if that large molecule is in fact a large food macronutrient or protein, then your immune system might start sending signals to create this immune response and start creating antibodies 
and start attacking it. And now anytime you eat that again, your immune system sees it as dangerous, it attacks it, it causes more inflammation and continues to further break down the, le- the lining of the gut. Now, all of this results in food intolerances and these food intolerances continue to wreak havoc on the gut until they are removed. And it's like this vicious cycle. Um, something started leaky gut and then the food intolerances, uh, the a leaky gut causes food intolerances and food intolerances continue to cause leaky gut. So it's like this vicious cycle. So in order to heal the gut, you must remove these foods or they will continue to break down the lining of the gut and you won't be successful. So we had one family who saw some great results with gluten-free. Um, her son, you know, had eczema and um, we saw the eczema reduce with the gluten-free, but it was still there. And we did a food sensitivity panel and this kid was reactive to banana. As soon as she took the banana out of his diet, the eczema completely disappeared. It's hard to know which particular foods are causing that inflammatory response in a child unless we do that testing. So maybe along um, with gluten, your child has another food that they're sensitive to that is causing those issues. Um, The functional lab test allows us to know exactly which foods a child needs to avoid. I hope that makes sense. Um, And then finally, another thing to keep in mind is that some kids take months to get those inflammatory responses out of their body when going gluten-free. You have to remember that it took them X number of years to get to the point where they are with their current level of dysfunction or symptoms and there are no quick fixes. So I always tell my families I work with that it can take three months or even six to 12 months to see gluten get completely out of the body, depending on how much of an inflammatory response your child experiences. So be patient, keep doing what you're doing. And I know that you've totally got this. Um, I hope that this helps the answer to your question. So guys, we're going to pop the link to that leaky gut um, video after I finish up, but I hope you all have a wonderful weekend and take care and I'll see you next week. Bye.